You know what's scarier than facing a titan with a hangover? The hype surrounding a new anime release, that's what. Remember when interspecies reviewers reigned supreme on my anime list? Let's be real here. That vulgar comedy had no business being at the top. However, fast forward a bit, and who emerged to seize the spotlight? None other than Freer and Beyond Journey's End. And let me tell you, unlike reviewers, Freerin deserves every bit of that hype. As of writing this script, the creators have unleashed 23 episodes out of the promised 28. This series, following the adventures of an elf girl exploring the world to understand human nature. It's got melancholy vibes, sprinkles of humor, epic battles, and moments of serene everyday life. So, what's this show all about anyway? Picture this. The typical run-of-the-mill storyline where a brave group led by the hero sets out to vanquish some big evil. Your standard fantasy fare, right? Well, hold on to your waifu, because Free Ren flips the script right from the get-go. The story kicks off after that infamous Demon King has already bitten the dust, courtesy of our hero and his gang. The epic showdown with evil in far-flung lands is now a distant memory as the heroes return home after a quest. Everyone's got their own goals and aspirations because, let's face it, you can't turn back the clock on lost time. Well, everyone except our protagonist, Freren. To her, whether it's been 10 years or 50, it's all a piece of cake. So, when she suggests meeting up half a century later to catch another glimpse of a shooting star, she can't fathom why her comrades react so strangely. And by the time the realization hits her, it's too late. From that moment on, she embarks on a journey not just to uncover arcane spells, but to get a better grip on human nature. But fear not, she's not alone on this journey. One of her old partners, the priest Hyder, introduces her to a young girl named Fern. Much like Freerin, Fern's got a knack for magic, and thanks to Hyder's crafty scheme, our elf becomes Fern's mentor. And let me tell you, this ain't your run-of-the-mill mentorship journey. There's no cramming spells or exams here. Fern's education unfolds naturally, gradually blending into the everyday lives of our heroines. Everyday life takes center stage here, but not your typical slice-of-life affair. No high schools or rom-coms in sight. Freerain is all about discovery and the long road ahead, so the everyday here has a fantastical adventurous twist. Seasons and years fly by, but our heroine seems unfazed by the passage of time. And the viewer's attention to the relentless march of time is drawn only to subtle nuances, lest we get distracted from the main event, like neat little timestamps in the corner of the frame, reminding us how long it's been since the demise of the hero Himmel. Friarin's perception of time is fundamentally different from us mere mortals. She could easily spend six months searching for a single flower, much to the amazement and irritation of her pupil. Spending several months clearing the coastline of shipwreck remains just to catch a glimpse of a solitary sunrise. Yeah, that's just how she rolls. Even the spells she collects are downright quirky. Now let's talk about the real star of the show. Freerin herself. She's like that one friend who's always got your back, but also can't be bothered to get out of bed before noon. I mean, she's over a thousand years old, seen more than your grandma's attic, but that doesn't stop her from regularly pulling off some absolute madness. She's like a walking contradiction, blending wisdom with clumsiness, maturity with childlike wonder, and all wrapped up in a big old package of, I have no idea what's going on. And guess what? Her squad isn't any better. Take Fern, for example, who's constantly playing the role of a nurturing mother to our whimsical and lazy protagonist, despite being a teenager herself just yesterday, still prone to childish outbursts. Then there's Stark, the warrior who doesn't exactly join the party right away, also serving as a paradoxical character. The show explicitly calls our hero a coward who fears battle, but Free Ren, former comrade, a dwarf named Ison, insists that Stark is very strong. And the anime isn't shy about backing up those words with action, showing both sides of the coin time and time again. 
Beyond Journey's End may seem like a serious piece of work at first glance, tackling some weighty themes. But that doesn't stop the creators from gleefully dropping jokes in the most unexpected places, seamlessly blending humor into the narrative. Remember when Goblin Slayer dropped a few years back and everyone was like, Yo! It's like Doom Guy, only from anime? Well, forget about that. If anyone's earning the title of the Doom Guy, it's Fryerin. The way she takes down demons with ice-cold precision is downright admirable. Sure, the series isn't solely focused on action, but when it does kick in, it's like fireworks on New Year's Eve. Colorful, explosive, and over before you know it. Some might see that as a downside, but Freerin doesn't drag things out. Characters don't mess around. They know their strengths, and they play them like a pro. Except maybe Stark, who needs a kick in the butt to get going. And these aren't just random trump cards either. The series thoroughly explains what, how, and why things happen. Whether through flashbacks, brace yourselves, there are a bunch, or straightforward demonstrations, it doesn't matter. What counts is that the authors spell out and show why a spell that was unbeatable 50 years ago suddenly isn't as deadly today, or why Freerin earned herself a dark reputation among demons. Now, who's behind this brilliance? Is it the original manga creators or the screenwriters at Madhouse Studio responsible for the adaptation? Probably both. Although, just a glance at the adaptation team's lineup is enough to silence any doubts. For instance, the show's director is Saituka Ichiro. His previous gig in the same role was with Bachi the Rock. Handling the story is Suzuki Tomohiro, who's got One Punch Man under his belt, among others. The key animators on the show include Enokido Shun, who worked on Fate Apocrypha and the second Evangelion rebuild, and Hata Ayako, who did animation for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Summer Wars. And let's not forget animation director Hamada Kunihiko, who, aside from Summer Wars, also lent his talents to projects like Technolize and No Game No Life. And that's not even everyone, but surely that's enough for you, right? Oh, you want more? Alright, how about a couple more names? The series composer is Evan Call and the opening is performed by the incredibly popular duo Yoasobi. This series has literally everything you need for a good time, a solid story, brilliantly written characters, and lively action seamlessly woven into fantasy everyday life. In short, there's nothing to nitpick here. But hey, if I had to find something to gripe about, it's the slow burn on the plot and the snail's pace relationship development. But you know what? On the other hand, this is another plus for the series. After all, they are trying to show us how a long-lived elf learns to understand people. And let me tell you, that ain't an easy feat. Is it worth watching? Absolutely. Of course, with the caveat that you're not put off by the fantasy setting and the emphasis on laid-back everyday life rather than battles. Ah!